In this lecture, you'll learn about ONTAP VLANs. We can use VLANs in ONTAP to share our physical network ports among different client connection types, but keep those connections still separate and secure from each other. In the ideal scenario, different connection types would be terminating on different physical ports. For example, let's say that we've got department A and department B. We've created a separate SVM for department A and department B, and both departments are using SIFs, NFS, iSCSI, and we've got their management traffic as well. Well, if we wanted to keep those SIFT connections and NFS and iSCSI and management connections on separate physical ports for the two different SVMs, and we were connecting out to two redundant switches, well, we would need 16 physical ports per node for that scenario. And if we were using interface groups to bundle our physical ports, we would need even more. So it's not always going to be possible to dedicate separate physical ports to the different connection types. Actually, very often it won't be possible to do that. So VLANs are useful where the number of those client connection types is more than the number of available physical ports. A VLAN can be created on a physical port or on an interface group and lifts, that's our logical interfaces, and that's where the IP addresses are signed, they can be placed on physical ports or interface groups or on VLANs. I'll talk more about logical interfaces in a later lecture in this section. So looking at using dedicated physical ports first. So this is where we do have separate dedicated physical ports for our different connection types. We've got a department A SVM and we've got a department B SVM. We're using physical port E0C for department A. So department A has got a logical interface with IP address 10.10.10.10 and it is homed on port E0C. And then department B, they've got a logical interface with IP address 192.168.20.11 and it is homed on port E0D. And as long as each of these physical ports had enough bandwidth to support the client, then that would be the ideal way to configure this particular scenario. But maybe we don't have enough physical ports to give both department A and department B their own ports for this particular connection type. Well, in that case, they can share the same underlying physical port. So now on port E0C on my node, I'm going to run the traffic for, for both department A and department B on that physical port. But obviously, there are two different departments. I need to keep them secure from each other. So the way I do that is at layer three of the OSI model, they're using different IP addresses. Department A's logical interface is using IP address 10.10.10.10. .10 .10 .10. Department B's logical interface is using IP address 192.168.20.11. So they are in different IP subnets. So on my routers and my firewalls outside the ONTAP system, I can create rules there that keep those two different traffic types separate from each other. So at the IP address level, I've got them separated at layer three of the OSI stack. I also want to have them separated at layer two of the OSI stack as well. So that's why I put them into separate VLANs. Department A are using VLAN 10 in our example, and department B are using VLAN 20 in our example. So I make sure that from a networking point of view, department A and department B are kept strictly segregated from each other. On the switch port, that is connecting down into my ONTAP node, I can figure that as a trunk. A trunk port will carry the traffic for both VLAN 10 and for VLAN 20. When traffic is tagged with VLAN 10, that's going to hit my VLAN interface that I've created for department A. So for department A, I create an E0C.10 VLAN interface, meaning any traffic that is tagged for VLAN 10 is going to hit that logical interface. 
and any traffic which is tagged with VLAN 20, which is for department B, is going to hit my VLAN interface E0C.20. I put my department A logical interface on the E0C.10 VLAN interface, and I put my department B logical interface with their IP address on the E0C.20 VLAN interface. So that allows both department A and department B to share the same underlying physical port, but their traffic is kept separate and secure from each other. Okay, so that first example was using physical ports. What if I have grouped my physical ports into an interface group? So on the first slide here, it's where I have got separate interface groups for department A and department B. So here on my node one, physical port E0C and E1A is grouped into an interface group. Notice that that is using one physical port, which is on board on the controller. The other one is using a physical card in slot one, that is E1A. And then on that interface group, so I've grouped that in uh, interface group A0A and my department A logical interface with IP address 10.10.10.10 .10 is placed on that interface group. And then I have configured a separate interface group for department B that is on physical ports E0D and E1B. They have been bundled into the logical interface group of A0B and my department B logical interface with IP address 192.168.20.11 is put on interface group A0B. So here I've got separate interface groups dedicated for department A and for department B. Let's look and see where we can use VLANs here. So maybe there wasn't enough bandwidth really there for department A and department B to burst. Let me just go back a slide and tell you what I mean. So let's say that I'm using one gigabit ethernet ports here. So here, department A and department B have got have both got two gigabits available to them. But maybe sometimes department A burst a little bit above that. And maybe sometimes department B burst a bit, a bit above that as well. Well, here they're physically limited to the maximum of two gigabits, so they wouldn't be able to burst above it. Let's look and see how we can use VLANs to allow them to occasionally burst above that two gigabits. So here, now I take my four interfaces on node one, E0C, E1A, E0D and E1B, and I put those all into a single interface group now of A0A. And then I split my interface group of A0A into my two different VLAN interfaces. That's A0A.10 for VLAN 10 and A0A.20, which is for VLAN 20. Department A's logical interface with IP address 10.10.10.10 goes on to my A0A.10 VLAN interface and department B's logical interface with IP address 192.168.20.11 that goes on to the VLAN interface of A0A.20. So now you can see that I've got four gigabits per second bundled together here into my single interface group logical interface and I'm sharing that with both department A and department B. So now if either department sometimes wants to burst above the two gigabits per second, I've got an aggregate of four gigabits per second there and we're gonna be able to do that. Now, obviously I need to be careful here that one department doesn't take all the available bandwidth. Well, I can use storage QoS to do that, which is gonna be covered in a later section. But this is a way that we can use VLAN interfaces to allow department A and department B to be able to burst above what they would have been able to if I was dedicating interface groups to each one and it still keeps them separate and secure from each other. Okay, so that was how our VLANs work in ONTAP. See you in the next lecture. Thanks for watching. If you want to get hands-on practice with NetApp storage for free on your laptop, then you can download my free ebook, which you can see above my head right now. Also check out my NetApp Storage Complete course, which will teach you everything you could possibly want to know about ONTAP. Thanks.